Maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm Casey, maybe I'm not, maybe I'm not. All right, TJ Hushmanzada, thanks hey. for joining us again. We appreciate it. We were just talking about um, Old Town Road, because yeah. did you hear the remix? Oh, the I remix to the remix. No. Oh, there's, yeah, there's a, well, yes, exactly. I should, yes. yeah, I should say appropriately, the remix to the remix. Right. Yeah. They put the little, Billy Ray Cyrus was the remix, and then, yeah. Right. They put Young Thug and uh, Mason Ramsey, you know, he was a yodeler, yeah, yeah. the, the yeah. Walmart guy. He went and came in and killed it. So I'm going to, I'll. Yeah, he came in and I, killed it. Yeah. I'll give you the timestamp so you can skip Are the all the lyrics stuff. different? Uh, they should be, but they're not. No. no okay, not. so, all right, so this song, like, well, it's really actually very relevant to sports because when this song really started hitting mm -hmm. was during the college football playoffs. And yes. it was in every locker yeah. room. Like, guys were going crazy. And now it's taken over the entire world and all of our lives. And if you have children, then you know this is the song. This and Sunflower yeah. by Post Malone, thanks to Spider-Man, oh, are so the cool. kids' number one songs in life. Yeah. You have yeah. children? Well, Earl has two children. And, Man, and my kids, this is... They, they, no nine lie. and four. This song... And Sunflower. Yeah. My, my son turned the song on, Sunflower. I'm like, huh? I mean, did you see how he just looked at me? This, the, these are the kids' songs. Yes. Like, we get in the car, the and those are the two songs. Yes. They can't run in summer, though. Kids can't run the summer. They run no, it. No, they do. They run everything. When you have kids, what are you talking about? You're going to see. You don't make decisions <laughs> anymore. Run the summer, run the summer. Run the summer. Run the summer. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, no. Um, that and Juju on that beat is, is oh, his jam. Yeah. But that's oh, like yeah. a throwback jam for him. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. he starts with Old Town Road, and then it is Sunflower, and yes. then he'll ask for Juju on that beat. And he knows every word to all of them. But yeah, so Old Town Road is like, it's taken over the entire world. And so now you were talking about the lyrics when you really, we've listened to it so much that you actually start to break down the lyrics, which I feel like is dangerous because, you know, we had some songs growing up that were not really appropriate. True, true that, true that. You know, I, I like, broke down well, Usher's my, first hit and I was like, one of my favorite songs okay, as, as, nice a, as a very young child, as, as being raised on Whitney Houston, was Queen of the Night. Not an appropriate song for a young child. No, 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 no. Peaches and Cream was my brother's favorite song yeah, growing nope, up. Yeah, nope, not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, right. just, yeah, it's moving on. Just, um, okay, so <laughs> we were talking, the Madden ratings came out, very easy transition. Yes. Um, the Madden ratings came out, you told a story on The Herd earlier. Players really actually care about Madden ratings, right? 100%. Do you yeah. you actually forced your way into a higher Madden rating? Yeah, I was Ooh. mad. Like the it came out one year, and I don't know what I was ranked, but I thought I should have been ranked higher. And I said something in an interview, and they ranked me higher. How much higher? Like significantly, or like enough that you felt? I like... might have been like ninety, and I went to like a ninety-three or ninety-four. That's a big jump. And so, but it was rightfully so. It was guys that were they weren't better than me. And they were hard. It was a lot of guys that weren't better than me that was always ranked Who hard. Who was it particular? That I don't like... remember exactly. But by this time, I had been playing well. Right. So I'm like, y'all, re it's really a respect thing more so than anything oh, else. Like, you really got this dude rated higher than mm -hmm. me? Y'all tripping. So do you think that it is disrespectful to the other receivers in the league that DeAndre Hopkins is 99? Yeah. But I will say this. But is, my... he, is he a 99? If he's a 99, Julio Jones is a 99 as well. Easy. So and Julio can go on too. So to me, Julio Jones is the best receiver in the league, and then it's DeAndre Hopkins to mm. me. Well, and Julio so Jones I can't, is a 98. I, so I can't argue both. If I'm DeAndre Hopkins, I like my 99. Of course. <laughs> but <laughs> right. if I'm Julio Jones and I got a 98, I might not like that I'm not a 99, but I'm cool with a 98. Yeah, you cool. I'm man. cool, yeah, but yeah. I think DeAndre Hopkins is the second best receiver in the league, so I'm okay with that. Okay, okay, so you, all right, so do you have DeAndre Hopkins above Antonio Brown? Or I do. do you, have, oh, you do, why? Just because Antonio Brown has played with Ben Roethlisberger his entire career. Mm. And he's, I'm, Ben Roethlisberger, is as many faults as he has, uh, Antonio Brown gonna see like, oh man, I divorced my wife and I can't even get her back now. Mm. He gonna see. Well, the Raiders are gonna be interesting. I think we're all gonna see. He is, with the Raiders. and, and that, that's why I put Hopkins ahead of uh, Antonio, just because Hopkins' quarterback is better in Watson than Browns is in Carr. Okay, okay, I can see I like that. that. Okay, Do you yeah. think that Aaron Rodgers is being disrespected because he has six guys yeah, ahead of him? Much now, so. very good guys ahead of him. It's right. not like there's any busters above him, but they gave him a rating of 90. Yeah, he sh he should be rated higher. He should at worst be the third guy on there. But so it goes Mahomes, Brady, Philip Rivers, Drew Brees, Andrew Luck, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, I would. So who Rodgers, would you move him above? All of them except for. Brady and Mahomes. And Mahomes is, huh? 
They they based this off of what happened last year. Right, right, right. Yeah, but I'm a receiver. You say, okay. who, who do I want me throwing the ball? All I ain't right. getting down the field like Mahomes likes to do it, so I don't even want Mahomes. Right. But I would take Brady. You're not trying to run like that? Yeah, I'm not getting down the field <laughs> like that. So I mean, first round. Hey, he, he, he ain't seen on that first one. I, I ain't <laughs> vibing with Mahomes. <laughs> But he's good. Right. But I'm taking Brady. I'll take Phillip Rivers. I'll take I'll take all these quarterbacks. But will I take them over Aaron Rodgers? Nah, maybe the only guy is Brady. If you twist more, we can argue Breeze. But Aaron that, that's Rodgers, it. Argue from a sack, Breeze? he literally is at the game. He, he's, he gets sacked and he is done for a week or two. Aaron Rodgers. Durability don't got nothing to do with it? I mean, we're stretching that a little bit, right? Just, but no, no. I mean, if durability has something to do with it, then why is Andrew Luck on there? Mm. Okay. So um, Aaron Rodgers, just a natural thrower of the ball, there's nobody better. It's okay. him and then pro- probably Matthew Stafford as far as natural thrower of the ball. <gasps> That's another bad one. I'm just telling yeah, you. TJ, what are yeah. you talking about? Joy. Okay, well, so, all so, right. So, Golden you, Tate said. You live well, out here. You brought up I'm Matthew a, Stafford. I didn't I no. didn't summon that name. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> You're going to have to explain yes. yourself. And so, there's a lot of animosity between those two. It has to be. Everybody knows why. Okay, right. so, we'll tell and the story so real quick. We'll, Golden Tate, he said that Matthew Stafford basically, he basically said Matthew Stafford is the best quarterback he's played with. Right. He played with Russell Wilson. So right. it was, Shout uh, out to Golden uh, Tate. Notre Dame. Uh, yeah, you know boy. him. Okay, so you can maybe I'm ask him to explain Tate himself. Here. So Don't get the real story. And well, so you, do he'll your tell job. You, you know, he probably already knows. But that's what do you another, mean you that's another tell story. Tell the story. That's another, you can't tell that. You find ways you to can't tell. Talk you, can't. Yeah, you, can't <laughs> you can't talk about open cases. You can't tell. You can't speak on open cases. You find ways to work it <laughs> yeah, into the story. Yeah, he went to Notre Dame. He can tell the story. You find other people who had pieces of it, and then you connect the dots. <laughs> true that, true that, true that. All right, go ahead. And so this is what I'll say. I've never really been around Matthew Stafford. So the last week and a half, the guys that I work with, I've actually had a chance to be around them. That boy throws the ball. Mm. Like, he really, really throws the ball. Now, is Golden Tate Hayden? Yes, he is. But when you, look, when you look at it, you look at Golden Tate's stats with Seattle, four years. Golden Tate's stats with Detroit, four years. He should think Matthew Stafford is better. He had damn near twice as many catches, damn near twice as many yards, yeah. and almost double the touchdowns. So if I play with Russell Wilson – and I get this, no. and then I play with it Stafford, and I get that. It was different because Golden was at a different point in his career taking the number one position because Calvin had just left. Now, he got a chance to get worked into it and get all those, you know, go and eat them yak yards up. And it's the, – the problem with Detroit is they lo- they were losing so much. It's a lot of gar- garbage yards and garbage catches. Amen. But Amen. You, they, when you look at the end of the season, True. they all add up the same. And that's where the money comes from. And, and exactly. <laughs> yeah. And so yeah. Golden Tate is looking at statistically – I did well with Matthew Stafford, and I was just okay with Russell Wilson. So part of it is the truth in Golden Tate's eyes. This best buddy. part quarterback he played Okay, with. but, all right, so maybe all those things are fair, right? Not, like, just to remember what we all play for is wins, We're not right? saying Russell but. Wilson is a uh, – that Matthew Stafford is a superior quarterback, but in Golden Tate's eyes for his career mm-hmm. – so he did, did better with Matthew Stafford for all the reasons no you just mentioned. No comparison, way better. Okay, but do, don't you think – don't you think, like, just a little bit, and look, we all, we get it, all right? We all are on the same page. But don't you feel like Russell Wilson just gets disrespected, like, just a little bit? He does. And it, he gets disrespected because he's a black quarterback and he doesn't act the way people think he should act. That's just the reality of it. And I don't know True. if anybody's ever said it. This is probably the first time I've ever said it. But that's just the reality of it. It's like... He don't act the way we want him to act. Well, I don't care well, how he acts because I but don't. Joy, I have know, no. I, it's not my problem. But is but, that why? No, I understand the perception of Russell perception, Wilson. Perception, yes, and it's. Right. Been, I, I don't like to say that because I don't want to give people who like that. That's just that, right. That that animosity amongst us ammunition. So yeah, I, I don't want to talk about and that. I, and I'm on but, the same page. But I'm saying. But that's why. But that's why he gets disrespected. Well, yeah, he does get disrespected. He Russell Wilson is a lot better than. What people give him credit for? He, he is. Yeah, it, it's just the persona. Do we need to pull up that play where he literally ran in like fifteen circles? No, he's amazing. He's really good. He avoided like ten sacks yeah. and still threw a touchdown. I'm exaggerating, but he's so like good. he's really good. No, he's so good that people forget that we're watching the NFL when you watch him play. Sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm you not shouldn't be allowed to do that. You I'm shouldn't not be allowed. taking it that far. You shouldn't be allowed to do the things he because that's college. You know, it's like when they, they're like, oh, that's a college play. Russell Wilson does He makes does a plays great job. out of plays that but, shouldn't but, be made. But I mean, if, if, if I'm gonna argue with you here which we are you say <laughs> damn he does have Pete Curl 
He played with defensively. Yes. He yes. played with arguably four to five <sighs> Hall of Famers. Who's done that? Yeah. Okay, well, this year. Who's done that? This year, right. he's not going to have that situation. So mm-hmm. he will get to prove. Mm-hmm. At least, he'll still have one on he'll, defense okay, and okay, Bobby but, Wagner. But, right. but TJ, though, come on. Like, name the great, great quarterbacks who have won multiple championships that didn't have a, g- a good coach with them. Like, Brady, everyone could argue mm-hmm. that that half of this, their success is Belichick. Yeah. And I have, I think Brady's the greatest ever. Like, I don't think Belichick is there without Brady, but I also they don't think that Brady, yeah, like, they I don't think, I think they hand. go hand in hand. Like, mm-hmm. with football, that's a situation. Basketball is different. Mm-hmm. LeBron is, has never played True. with a Hall of Fame coach. True. He wins championships when the coach gets changed that same year. It's less people on the court. That's what I'm saying. It's a completely different comparison situation. But, like, it's a team sport, and the coach really matters. Like, so I don't like that, like, oh, well, he has Pete Carroll. Yeah, but like, it, they need Pete Carroll, and he Pete, doesn't play both sides of the ball. They need only, a good defense. It's not only Pete Carroll. You got Richard Sherman. Man, there's a lot more. The, Cam the Chancellor. They had a great Earl team. Thomas, Michael Ben. I mean, you have... When Most Wagner, Super Bowl have, teams no, no, are great not, teams. How that, many Super Bowl teams have on defense mm-hmm. and for consecutive years four Hall of Famers? Not many. No. Not and when you many. have a defense like that, you can do stuff like we've seen Russell Wilson and open up the playbook on offense because you know you got that defense. Not, so the variables. They're, they're giving up, I'm guessing, here, up. they're giving up less than 12, 10 to 12 points a game. I probably can play quarterback and win that game. Okay. See, like, <laughs> I, 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 I said probably. We not were, that I could. We there, probably. And then that's how you end you all of yeah. it. After you end all conversations. And I, I, I can, can throw not, you a couple screen I passes. I am not out there going to get Pat White <laughs> in this situation. Get screen passes? I can't get hit. There are squirrels out there? That's what you do. <laughs> yeah. That's I, I, Actually, I would run very fast because yeah, I was yeah. not trying to get hit. Football is not the sport for me. At all. Um, oh, okay, so boy. the Cowboys have a little bit of a situation on their hands. Yes. I am very pro everybody get your money. Mm-hmm. And I think, especially if you've earned it, which Dak Prescott mm-hmm. in my eyes has, um, I don't know why the Cowboys, maybe Cowboys fans, do you guys not have um, like the internet? Because if you look on the internet, you could find the record before I'm pointing at Ashley because she's a big Cowboys fan. Yes. Uh, when Tony Romo went down, how bad you were, very bad. Yes. And then Dak Prescott came in and then he saved the day. Right, and then we had that whole year the where they were like, really, they really were thinking. Can you remember the time when they thought they were going to take Dak Prescott out and put Tony Romo back in? Back. I do remember that. Yeah. Yeah. When Romo got That's healthy. They were saying, right? "Is they he going to really be thinking benched?" About doing I remember that. that. Yes. About what an insane thing to think. I remember and that. And now they think that they're not going to pay Dak Prescott, and I think that's just insane. Like, there's talk that they should just let his contract play out and just try and find someone in that's the draft. Crazy. Had they and I low key wow. kind of hope that happens. I, I, I kind of hope it happens. I love that the Cowboys are good because they're great to talk about. Obviously, right. it's great for a business when mm-hmm. Cowboys are good. But it's so insane to me that they're not going to pay Dak that I almost hope it does happen. And then they go back to that state that they were in before when Tony Romo went down. Do you think that they should pay Dak whatever it is, that the max of whatever it is? Eventually, he's not going to be the highest paid quarterback. Like He's not going to be the highest paid quarterback for the next 15 years. That's not how the contracts work. I do believe they should pay Dak. Now, I'm not. I'm a proponent of guys getting their money. Obviously, I was a player. He should not make more than Aaron Rodgers. Mm. And, yes. and that's just the reality of it. But the Cowboys have screwed this but up. out of principle or out of the fact that now, like, like it's going to handicap the team? Because to me, like the, the idea of like, I don't believe make in more... a handicap. They're, man, they got enough money. They can structure these contracts where they can really overload the salary in a certain year for the salary cap and then – down and then the salary cap will drop. They they can the cap number will they can figure out a way to make this work. What I'm saying is this: last this past fall, the Cowboys could have given Dak Prescott 26 million a year, and everybody would have thought, "Oh my God, they're crazy. He's overpaid." If he takes 26 million now, everybody gonna look at him and say, "Why would you do that?" Right. So number one, they have misplayed this big time. They yeah. have to pay him because mm-hmm. it's just what you just said. When Romo got hurt. Here comes Dak Prescott with the life vest and raft saving the whole team and organization. Yeah. He brought them back to relevance. You got that comes with a price tag. Yeah, it does. That comes take what he's doing on the field. This is off the field. That mm. comes with a price tag. They mm. also won the division. Yeah. I said this earlier. Won a playoff game. Yeah. Finally. What do they talk about for quarterbacks? What do they want you to do as a quarterback? It's just two things. Win and lead. Mm. Dak Prescott does both of those things. Ooh. He checks both of those. He wins, and he leads the team. 
He you gotta pay him. I, I, I mean, I, everything that you're saying is what I've been saying. The, the longer the, they the, wait, the more you got to pay him. Joe Flacco, Baltimore Ravens situation. Woo, the longer they wait, but the it's the longer truth, they though. wait. It's the truth though, and and God, it's right. Bad. He's 100 percent right. They could have figured this whole situation out before. Now all of a sudden, Carson Wentz, which by the way, <laughs> and I I don't mean any disrespect to Carson Wentz because I, I do think he's a great talent. But I'm sorry, Dak has had a better career than Carson Wentz. But he this, has. Like I don't. It, it, it's. Joy, I don't you know care that you were in the MVP conversation. You weren't available, and it's not his crazy, fault that he though? got injured. But he has had two major injuries. One more, and you're freaking Sam Bradford. When you bring up, mm. when, when you bring mm. up Carson Wentz, I'm Sam Bradford. Why the Why does sports work this way? You know why that's the case. Where was he drafted? Ooh. That's why. And Dak Prescott was in the. the that's not yes. overall. That's round. Fourth right. round versus so second pick. That's why, oh, Carson Wentz, you are the second pick. We're going to pay you now. Dak Prescott, you are a fourth rounder. We're going to make you wait. We're not looking at the stats and saying, oh, they're comparable. Oh, it's where you were picked. How did we think of you yep. when you first came that's into the, the league? That's why matters. That's why. Mm-hmm. Right. But if you compare them side by side, it, Dak has had a better career. Like it's 100%. Not, it's, not even, it's not even comparable. Yeah. Dak is, is healthy. And, and Carson Wentz is great. He's a leader and he's super Would talented. Would you agree with me that the rosters are – it's not like Dak Prescott's guys around him are so much better than Philadelphia. No. no. Very comparable. No, no, no. Very comparable. Very comparable. Very comparable. Very comparable. Very comparable. And I understand he has Zeke, and that's a big part of it. And we'll talk about Zeke in a second. Mm-hmm. I understand he has Zeke. But so what? Jared Goff had Todd Gurley. Like, hello, it's a team sport. Okay. You need either a great defense right. or you need a, an explosive offense, pieces on offense. It's a team sport. You can't do everything yourself. It's not basketball. You need other, at least one other great piece on either side mm-hmm. of the ball to be successful. So I, don't, I don't care about all that. It's not like he's carrying the team. My point with Dak is it's silliness with these, with this, oh, he can't be the highest paid quarterback. Stop getting caught up on that. The next guy that gets paid is going to be the highest paid quarterback. And then that he's not the highest paid quarterback. And as far as the money goes, he's been on a fourth round contract for his entire career. Yeah. You haven't been paying him shit. No. And you haven't put the pieces around him with all that extra money that you have not being tied up in him yeah. to get him to a Super Bowl. What you, else you is he supposed what, to do? You know what annoys me too though is how they'll say oh you have to take a discount like Tom Brady. No. We ain't talking right? about no. No, Tom no. Brady when he signed his first deal he was the highest paid quarterback in the league. He was the highest paid quarterback in the league. Yeah, people, for, yeah. people forget about that. Oh, he might take a discount now. I forgot about it. But you're not taking no di- That first time you get a crack at that big contract, mm-hmm. you don't take discounts. No. no. You take discounts after, but also, not the first time. Tom Brady, no. you're absolutely right. And Tom Brady is not even a part of this conversation. But first of all, Tom like Brady the, has oh. the, has along with him, okay, first of all, he had, he had huge success very early in his career, A. B, he is alongside arguably the greatest coach in NFL history. It's very easy to take a discount when you're in that situation because you know that coach, you can trust that he's going to put the pieces around you to get you to another Super Bowl. We're not taking discounts in our 20s. We're not taking discounts Mm, in our 20s. And we're not Mm. taking a discount with Jason Garrett. No offense, okay? (laughs) And lastly, which we are going to mention because it's important, he's married to Giselle Bunchen is worth $100 million. That's not his friend. Hey, you know what okay, they're married. Bring... <laughs> That's not his friend. You, you know what people never Equally bring up? Equally yoked. People <laughs> never bring this up. I haven't heard this on oh, TV, man. radio, podcast. Where is Tom Brady's TB12 facility at? I don't know. It's on a... Area 51? No, no, no. <laughs> Area 51. <laughs> It's on like what Patriot Place? Yeah. It's in that property. Oh, okay. What what you think he acquired that at? You think he paid full yeah. asking price real estate value for that? No, probably. So I'll take a discount oh and I'm going to help God. you out after football. Ain't nobody's ever brought that up. So do you think he really I paid dollar it. for dollar for that property? No. no. I don't think so. No. So if you don't give me this. I mean, we are speculating. Very much speculation. But, but what I'm saying, even if I got a small discount, I'm making so much money now off of this on a property of yeah, the Patriots. Yeah, I mean, Tom Brady, it's not a comparable situation. So, so yeah. no so, discounts in your 20s. Yeah, no, no. no discounts. That said, somebody who's really not trying to get a discount is Zeke. So Zeke has two years left on his deal, and he's talking about holding out going into the uh, into training camp. Right. I don't I don't understand it, I, especially considering the fact that he once again had an incident 
off the field, which I don't care about. And I know I do not care about guys getting in trouble off the field anymore. I will not discuss it. That is my official stance. Not during off season? No. Like it's not it's not it's no longer so discussable. Minor though. So um, minor. Yes. Was, um yeah. but it is Zeke, so yes. it's mm-hmm. he already has yep. a yes. list, so it just everything gets elevated. That said, I don't really feel like he's trustworthy off the field. Like it, it's all it's always something with him. And he is the number one running back in the league to me, but what are you doing holding out a training camp two years out? He's looking at it as if he's watching a lot of TV. They're going to run him in the dirt, and we're going to get rid of you. Guys, let's go back to getting in in trouble off the field. Just hire security, man. Pay $1,000 a night. It's cheaper than an attorney if you get in trouble. $1,000 every time you go out for a really good two guys to secure you. It's cheaper than an attorney because you're going to spend thousands once you get in trouble. Why don't the Cowboys do that? So, is, how is that right? not a good investment do for the Cowboys? Do it yourself. You, when you go out and you get a table, how much you spend to impress the women? Thousands, plural. Go get your security and spend 1000 and you you don't have those problems. Yeah. Mm-hmm. He navigates you through those. Number one, if Ezekiel Elliott is smart, I'm not holding out. Number one, just go there and hurt your hamstring and let them play without you. Hurt your back. You can't diagnose those things. Oh, my back hurt. Oh, we no, it hurts. My hamstring, it hurts. Can't like go. don't don't hold out because you losing money trying to get money. Mm. Yeah. I mean that's what Le'Veon should have done last year. Don't yeah. don't let that money go. Get go to practice. Up oh, my hamstring hurt, and y'all gonna pay me this. I'm gonna still get this money. I'm not gonna give up money to get money. You can, with two years. You, but you doesn't can't. that hurt? Like a lot a, of guys do that. A, a lot of guys do that. Really? A lot of guys do that where. They'll go there, and I'm hurt now. And y'all, the coaches know that you're really not hurt, but they they. So get it, it doesn't hurt you in the contract moving forward that you were injured. No, because once you start making progress on that uh, contract, I'm starting to feel a little better now. Shout out to Kawhi Leonard. That's just the truth. <laughs> <laughs> that, 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 that that's the truth, and, and so that's what you have to do. Ezekiel Elliott, they're gonna try to run him in the ground. Mm. And give you the ball every down we can. We're going to get the fifth year option that we already picked up. We're going to franchise you at about $12 million a year. All right, somebody else can sign you. But isn't his argument starting to get null and void? Because as these years continue, running backs become least and least relevant. And it's not as important. Running back by committee wins Super Bowls, clearly. That's true. But. Ezekiel is the best back in the game. Him and Le'Veon are the best two running backs in the game. Yeah. And you can. It's true for everybody. Probably not those two and maybe mm-hmm. Todd Gurley. But then you look at Todd Gurley's situation That's what last I'm year. He's out now. But it's that is true. But those guys are special. Yeah. I mean they they can run on first down in between the tackles. They can get outside the edge. They can run away from you. Oh, I can pick the blitz up. Oh, I'll catch a pass on third down too. They can do everything. There's not many guys that can do that. It's really not. And you think it's replaceable. And then you get into a season and you say, oh, the season down the drain because we didn't want to pay this guy. Yeah. You can't do it. The Steelers stayed afloat last year. What they, huh? huh? The Steelers stayed afloat. When when the playoffs came, where were they at? They was, yeah, That's they, not yeah. afloat. Yeah. They was okay. a Titanic. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I would agree with right? that. Right? Yeah, yeah. I would agree with they that. They was afloat to that hole and then that water <laughs> started coming through. Yeah. <laughs> and right. quick. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it did. Um, all right. Well, speaking of the Steelers, let's talk about the AFC North really quickly. I I don't have good feelings about the Steelers this year. I do think they'll be better than the Browns, but I'm not I'm not feeling the the championship run in them this year. I think that it was I think it was a squandered opportunity to have Antonio Brown, Ben Roethlisberger, and Le'Veon Bell and not win a championship. I don't know how you do that. I think that there's plenty of blame to go around to everyone in that situation. Mm-hmm. It's not any one particular person's fault, but I think it was a breakdown in culture that caused that to happen. That said, what do you think of the AFC North? Because the Browns seem to think that they're winning a Super Bowl this year. <laughs> That's a tough division. It, it is. On paper, yeah. Well, you go with the Browns. Well, except for the Bengals. No, I'm <laughs> I'm telling you. And I, I'm not gonna really talk about the Bengals because it seems like I'm a homer. Right. But yes. if you look at their players and you look at everybody else's players, they they I match up personnel wise, personnel wise, player for player for player. Okay, but would, right you, there. would you argue that that's every year, though? That's like every, every year. Day, every that's year every... you look at the Bengals, the, okay. the roster, and you're like, okay, yeah, okay, okay. And then 2018 season started off 4-1. and one. Injury, 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 injury. Mm-hmm. So that you could say that derailed their season. Right. But they started off 4-1, and one, 
and they had a ton of injuries. Now, Zach Taylor, can he get in there? Like, with the Browns, I'm more so – I'm sold on our personnel. I'm yeah. I'm not worried about Odell and Baker because Baker has that personality. Right? Yeah. As long as they get Odell to – He's a receiver. If he ain't getting the ball, he's upset. That's every receiver in the league. Right. The, your favorite receiver that's really nice, but when that camera's not around, is cussing the coach out. Baker Mayfield can handle that. Yeah. I'm concerned more so with Freddie Kitchens. How do you go mm. from being a position coach to an interim coordinator to a head coach? He, for me, is the only question mark I have with the Browns. The players can get it done. Can he lead them the right way is my only concern. And so that division is tough. I, I think the Steelers are going to take a step back. I, I, I really do. You can't replace Antonio Brown. You can't replace Le'Veon Bell. Um, that divi- Baltimore is always going to play great defense. Amen. And I just said the Bengals, their roster is good. I'm not really going. I'm hoping they can get out there and play. But you look at their receivers. Mm-hmm. Top in the league. I'm not saying number one, but they top five. Yeah. Okay. So who who do you pick right now? Super early. Oh, if I had to pick right now, I would go with Cleveland. And the question mark is the head coach, Freddie Kitchens. I like the players. Um, no, that's, that's – well, aside from the incessant losing culture that's existed in Cleveland forever. How many of those what, guys have ex- experienced that? I, no, I, it's fair. Yeah. And I do think that they are working this year to mm-hmm. erase that culture mm-hmm. from existence. They do have new players. Freddie Kitchens is my question mark, too. And not, I'm not rooting against him. Like, I I want Cleveland to be successful. All of Cleveland thinks everybody hates them and, like, just wants them to lose. And they don't understand uh, having a, a, a complete horrible team in the league is literally not good for anyone. It's not good for the league. It's not good for the players. Right. It's not good for media. Nobody wants a dud. Nobody. Right. You can't watch the game. Like, that's, nobody wants that. It's not, we don't care that much <laughs> to wish losing They better go 2-2, 3-1 two and two, three and, three and in the first four, or else it's... When you, I've been on losing teams a lot, and them first four games are paramount. It's very, very important because if you go one and three, it's like, oh, here we go again. <gasps> oh my God, no, they can't go one and three. Uh-uh. And so, no, that's the they key. They got a tough schedule. You okay, have to but they cannot the go they one and three. They got a tough schedule. I'm not hey, worried about kids. I'm worried about that schedule. Every schedule is tough before the season start, and then you start planning. Be like, oh, they weak oh, this year. Oh, they weak this year. <laughs> big facts, big and, and so, you got to get off to a good start because when you have a losing culture. You don't get off to a good start. Is mm-hmm. oh, it's man. this again? Here, yeah, yeah, here we go again. With them, but they because they gotta believe. They gotta believe in kitchens too. And, That's the only thing they they question. They in the locker room like I don't know about this dude, but we got Pittsburgh. It. They gonna play defense. Mm-hmm. Baltimore. They gonna play defense. We, for? we don't know what the Bengals gonna do, but we know <laughs> Baltimore and Pittsburgh gonna right. play defense. Yeah. So those division games, they not gonna be easy. Yeah, yeah. they're not gonna be Bengals easy. Bengals gonna beat up a bunch of teams. The Bengals have talent. They gotta show me. Okay. Okay. 